I'd like to uh, bring up Milano Lorenzo because uh, one of the first things we'll talk about is our budget. So the first item is our current fiscal year 16-17 budget. Um, there's an attachment to our report that gives the rundown which Milano can um, answer any questions, um, specific questions on it. But we are targeted uh, once again to complete our fiscal year in the black as, as we've done um, every year. Um, we did have an opportunity this year to uh, take a look at our budget really closely and put in a request to replace our two battalion chief vehicles with some funding excess that we had, we had found and we we're given approval for that. So we're in the process of um, going to procurement for the two vehicles for the uh, battalion chiefs, East Hawaii and West Hawaii. So, um, and that'll also, uh, with that replacement, will give us two, two spare vehicles that we can utilize in other um, uh, bureaus as well. So um, I wanted to thank Milano for that, for by scrutinizing our existing budget to look at that so that, you know, we wouldn't lapse those funds for, with equipment that we desperately needed, so. Why um, come to my house and help me with my budget? <laughs> <laughs> <You're amazing person. laughs> Let's look for crumbs. <laughs> So it's one of the things that we've been doing, um, we try to do every week uh, between myself, Milan, and our executive staff to go over the budget. And once again, we have the um, county budget and we have the state funded budget. So, you know, working at two. So for the state funded budget, we bring in our battalion chief of EMS uh, into the mix and they, they go through the budget to make sure that um, uh, the budget is, is gonna be on track and also for equipment that's needed that we make those purchases. Because for the finance department, they do have specific deadlines. And March 1st, correct me, was the yeah, deadline 1st. for all large um, equipment items. purchases. And we're basically in the end of the fiscal year now where we're just cleaning up our last, uh, you know, um, uh, POs and everything there to close out the fiscal year coming up um, uh, very shortly in the next few weeks. Excuse me, Chief, what's, what's classified as a large purchase? What's the threshold? 50,000, 50, 50, But as we progress towards um, the end of the fiscal year, we, we can still process small purchases for supplies, unanticipated supplies. Yeah. Okay, so I'll turn over uh, Milano to add, answer any questions on the current 16-17 uh, budget. Commissioners, uh, if you have already had a chance to review the report that was uh, provided to you, um, for just on the critical areas uh, where we were projecting at one point um, deficits in our budgets, but through reimbursements for uh, vacations that were accumulated that was paid out, uh, that's cash in lieu of vacation for retirees with that reimbursement and from uh, reimbursement from EMS. We are projecting uh, a balance on SNW of 588,000. And then as you progress down through the, the report uh, on the bottom, we're projecting a 2.64 balance uh, through June 30th. Yeah. But that's primarily comprised of unspent SNW. So that gives you a little bit of cushion if you have a Correct, because yeah, we still correct. have two months to, yes, yeah. correct. And hopefully we're not like the uh, Eastern Pacific and start getting our hurricane season starting early. Right. Right? Well, so. The first one was in the FEMA report yeah. yesterday. Or yes, record-breaking yeah. formation. Yeah. What's the CILB? Uh, cash in lieu, that's for accumulated vacations uh, that we pay out upon separation. Yeah. That's that, that balloon check that you get um, for your balances. <laughs> and, then and we don't normally budget for that. And so on the finance side, they they have a provision for um, that type of expenditure. Yeah, because we, we, we can't, of course, project it on our side because we don't know when uh, employees retire. We can ask, but sometimes, you know, we're, we're not sure. Any questions from the commissioners on the current fiscal year 16-17 budget? Hey, thank you. For um, uh, 
our upcoming budget, the 17-18 budget, we received the mayor's May 5th uh, budget um, back. And, and once again, over this, the course of this month is the period where they will take a look at it again and hopefully by the June 30th, the budget, the overall county budget will be signed and executed for July 1st. Um, I'm happy to report that for the fire department, those items that um, we had expressed that needed to be funded in our budget presentation were funded. Um, so I'm very, very thankful for the support and the assistance of the mayor and the finance department to work with us on, on getting those items back. Um, um, those included the, um, the recovery of the funding for the contractual rank uh, overtime expenses that are contract. Um, also, uh, we did receive uh, funding for uh, uh, increases in our training budget for our firefighter training. Those that were previously reduced down to um, zero, we reestablished funding back to um, pay for training for the fire. Uh, our staff, um, we did get the uh, extension of our apparatus replacement program. Um, so that was great. Uh, two apparatus for 2018, which would be a delivery of 2019. So very, um, that will keep moving forward. Our hazmat uh, protective suits, which are required to be replaced, was funded as well. Um, as well as some uh, increases in our equipment and some uh, salary and wages adjustments for the um, raises and so forth, as well as for ocean safety, um, our rescue boards and the rescue tubes. So some of the items that, um, when they're visiting the beaches, you know, they're, they're, um, they're in need of uh, very urgency as far as replacement. So we're very fortunate for that. So we can start replacing those items there. Yeah, so Milano will explain uh, yeah, so, a little bit more detail. So just, just as, as a recap, because we, we have provided you on the previous uh, meeting uh, what we submitted originally and then what was, uh, what was reduced. So, so essentially, our in original request was $48,070,273. And then on the March 1st revision, our budget was reduced to forty-five million one hundred forty-three thousand thirty-six dollars, which is a reduction of two point nine million dollars, and then on the May fifth, which the fire chief just mentioned, uh, we got our budget was increased to forty-seven million one hundred eighty-five thousand five hundred eighty-four, which represents a restoration of two two million dollars overall. So roughly, um, it's, it's a difference of about a $900,000 difference yes. there. And if we, we look back to back starting from July of last year to September when we were doing our own internal budget reduction um, um, proposals, we had a reduction somewhere in the range of about a half a million dollars off of our budget. So we're, we're really on track on what we started back um, in September. So. Um, we do realize it's a very difficult um, fiscal year that's going to come up for the county as a whole. Um, legislative, you folks know if you've been tracking the news, the TAT was reduced significantly for the counties, resulting in the mayors having to look at alternative funding um, uh, sources that have to go before council to come forward. So um, I am very grateful for the community for the items that was placed back into our, our budget. Um, no doubt it's going to allow us to, to continue to move forward. We didn't get everything we asked for and that's understood, but all of the other items in our supplemental budget, it's still there. So if for some reason the county does um, see some uh, influx in, in uh, funding sources, that's where they can relook at the department's supplemental budget requests that have come in and then fund those that they're able to fund. Along with that, I'm still working with the managing director as well as the uh, union president on how we can reduce costs within the budget, it, um, within the contract itself. So we have uh, weekly meetings with the managing director and we have an upcoming meeting that's yet to be scheduled with the union president. So we'll continue to keep doing that and um, seeing what we can do to um, help out the county's financial situation but still provide the services that we need to provide. 
Any questions on the I'm just curious, what could the president do to improve uh, It'd be premature for me to state anything with that. It's an open discussion. Yeah. 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 There's always a there's always an opportunity that you could do a supplemental agreement, although highly unlikely to reduce something that's already in the contract. But there's a there's a couple of items that on how we manage the day-to-day -day operations that could be up for discussion, such as the use of compensatory time off and so forth, mm -hmm. keeping in line with the Fair Labor Standards Act. Mm -hmm. so. so in the ex the additional funding you got for the two percent increase, correct? Was there any uh, funding to commensurate with the overtime rate that's not going to go up, or is that? No, no I, yeah, as we discussed in previous meetings, the, the overtime rate wasn't adjusted to the raises there. And also what I have to say also is that $47 million on the May 5th budget revision, budget version does not yet include the, the uh, collective bargaining uh, increases. And what do you predict, predict that would be? Um, right now we haven't done the final calculations yet. We have to present the calculations to the finance department yeah. for that. And, and to have the budget process move forward, uh, finance also has a provision in case we, we don't put it into our departmental budget. They, they have a provision for collective bargaining increases. Pay out first with the possibility of yes, it, it comes at a later time, like it would be around this time yes. next year, yeah. I, I would like to let the commission know that the process of the, the contract arbitration this year, um, we're grateful that it, it got completed before the end of the contract because the arduous task is to have to pick keep the contract status quo but while you work out the arbitration and, and if there's an award, have to figure out the payback. The retroactive, yes. Because that's an enormous amount of workload for the fiscal staff to calculate each person's change in the hourly pay, what they earn and what they would be paid back. So um, I'm very grateful that we went up first and we completed the process um, early. Okay. Thanks, Melinda. Thank you. So continuing on, just some highlights on our alternative funding and grants. Our 2016 the Community Development Block Grant that was awarded for a Pahala Wildland Pumper Apparatus Project. That's still moving forward. The, the pumper is still currently in production with the estimated completion date of roughly about October. It should say um, 2017, not 2107. Sorry about that. Um, our 2015 AFG grant that was awarded for the self-contained breeding apparatus inventory, um, we have already received um, products coming in. Uh, we did have a, uh, a, uh, a budget ex excess from the grant, so we just put in a budget amendment um, with uh, FEMA to purchase additional masks and additional units to um, spend the entire amount of that, that grant. So. Uh, we're, we're on track to um, complete that project by the June 30th deadline. So we've already done um, fit testing across the department. So fit testing is where each person has, um, gets tested for the correct um, uh, self-contained breeding apparatus mask. And then each person will have their own personalized mask. Um, we were not able to use the current mask that they have because it's a new unit that they're utilizing. So, but the, the sizes were generally about the same. So the grant took care of all of that as well. Um, in our human resources uh, division, the internal recruitment, um, our fire medical specialist tree position, uh, which is our community paramedicine position out of uh, West Hawaii. So that is set to um, stop on June 15, 2017, but we're already in consultation with the finance department. We've gotten the mayor's support to continue that position on, on a uh, temporary position for the next year. 
We're already in uh, consultation with the Department of Health to fund that through EMS funding. Um, we did have a bill that, that lasted to the last day of the legislature to fund that position as well as the program in its whole, but um, due to um, uh, fiscal situation of the state as well, that bill died on, on pretty much the last day. So, um, but um, it was a good sign that it went that far. Um, as, as I reported earlier, we're the only department that's doing the community paramedicine program and um, we've gotten rave reviews on, on at the state capitol about it. Um, my hat's off to uh, Captain Jesse Arbasaw and Captain Vern Hara, who's working really, really hard, because it ties into the mayor's initiative of, um, of dealing with the homeless population. So just a small capture of what they do. So the community paramedicine program, its main goal is to reduce the use of 911 services. So, because we get a lot of calls for someone that will call the ambulance because they don't have, they don't have access to health care otherwise. So, just a small part of how it ties into multiple programs. If we look at the homeless uh, initiative by the mayor, so our guys go out to the homeless encampments and they look at treatable situations that's going on, um, abrasions, wound cleaning. So they do wound cleaning, bandaging. So it prevents a small injury from becoming an infected serious injury that would require an emergency department of treatment. And then with that, we also put them into touch with uh, social services. So we, we have had a lot of people that we've been able to get off of the streets and hopefully on their way to a, a recovery to a more stable you know, lifestyle. So, um, I wasn't here when you made that particular portion of the report last time we had come in late. And, uh, Yesterday, I had a meeting with Citizens Corps, and they are in the process of, under the direction of civil defense, creating a uh, program called Program 360. Um, it has not yet been publicized in any way. It hasn't had any vetting or anything. This is all entering phase one. Um, but my question is, and it, it it borders on this, on these same issues, uh, based on what would happen in the event of. And so it says here they make assessments of a person's overall situations, vulnerable seniors, uh, overall situations, health and safety needs, and that sort of thing. So part of the discussion yesterday was creating a survey. Well, what we need is another survey, right? We've had plenty of surveys. But I'm wondering if the paramedics, when they do these assessments, when they go out there, I know they must document all of this so that they have an idea of where the most vulnerable people are so that that portion of their um, reports perhaps could fill in the gaps on this particular program as far as information is concerned in case we need to pull people out and, and that sort of thing and get the word out to this group of people as to how they can do the best they can to save themselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question of course is, is there paperwork or is there a listing of that kind of thing? There's, there's documentation that's being done with, with the work that they do. Um, if you give me the information um, after this, as far as the contact people, I can link them up with our personnel there. So we, we just, this program, keep in mind, is just two individuals right now right. That, are, that are doing it. So generally what happens is if our line paramedics can, can do a um, referral to the community paramedicine program personnel, which is Captains Hara and Ebersol, and then from there they'll go out and make contact as well. But there is documentation that they do. So, um, so that's Captain Hara? And Captain Ebersol. But send what, what you're looking for to me, and then I'll, I'll make sure we can um, see what we can give well, out. Well, I'm still, um, still trying to sift through all of this. Yeah, no problem. The, you know, recreating the wheel is wrong. If it's still rolling somewhere along the line, you can deal with that. And I was going through the heart. Uh, information, which sounded an awful like, lot like this program. And then there was another uh, FEMA thing that was put out for uh, 
dealing with, with care, caregivers and seniors. And that, that was also part of this whole thing. So um, I will contact you once I've waded through all of this. Sure, absolutely. Uh, but uh, the question, of course, too, came up, would fire and police be on board as part of the planning of this whole thing? Um, and I haven't spoken to Chief Ferrari yet, but um, certainly, since I have Chief Quarter here, um, this is a part of, of you know, the input that we would ask. Yeah, def definitely we would always be supportive of sitting down and looking at what the program is and right. how we can assist if, if anything at right. all. So, okay, Thanks. I look forward to that. Thank you. Okay. Our, uh, starting on May 1st, I was proud to announce that we welcome 17 new members to our department. Probably in the uh, July meeting, I'll probably bring them over here to uh, introduce you to the class. Um, they just started there in their first, first couple of weeks, so uh, very arduous training that they're going on um, right now. Yeah. As far as the administrative services and that, we did have an extension of the EU2F uh, open enrollment for our medical, a lot of work for our HR staff there. There, there was a lot of significant changes to um, some of the medical plans that, that re, uh, made a lot of our workforce change their plans. Um, so a lot of work that's going on with our HR staff, they're very busy with that, but I'm um, very um, grateful for the work that they do. We also completed a federal tax information uh, requirement that came out that we had to complete a survey um, for, for the federal government. So that took some time as well, but that was completed as well. And labor relation, we talked about the increases that was afforded to bargaining unit 11, but also bargaining units one and two, which is, which is our UPW workers, basically our mechanics, um, also received the 2% uh, increase. Um, in our emergency operations divisions, we highlighted some of the incidents we had last month. Um, Battalion one, once again, primarily in East Hawaii, and Battalion two um, in West Hawaii. Um, we did send uh, our, our, uh, some of our new um, battalion chiefs and up and coming um, fire captains who do temporary assignment into the battalion chiefs to uh, do a orientation with the emergency operational procedures at the civil defense. That's in case they get called in for, um, to be our liaison for um, island wide emergencies such as a tsunami hurricane, which will be there as well, but you know, you can't be there for 72 hours straight. So we do have some adjunct people that are in there. Also for um, fire department incidents that require an, an a EOC activation, such as a large scale brush fire that requires evacuation or road closures. So anytime we have a fire that requires evacuation or road closures, we do activate the EOC so that we have key personnel in there. It's not a full activation, but we'll have um, perhaps a representative from the Red Cross will definitely have police there and in public works. So that right there at the table is we can, when the incident commander calls in a need, we can say uh, right over to public works, hey, we need a roadblock at the bottom of Waikoloa or police, and then we'll, they'll figure out who will handle that. 